Back in October, I made this replica of Majora's Mask from, well, Majora's Mask for part of a Halloween costume I was making. I had a lot of fun making the mask itself and wanted to make more stuff like it, but I couldn't figure out what else to make. It then took me eight months to remember that the game this came from actually has 24 other mask designs, and I'm gonna make all of them. Welcome to Got Item. In the last episode, which was almost two full months ago now, I know, I know, I've been busy, we constructed the Deku Mask. Since we're going in rough order of when the masks are obtained in-game, the next on the list often seems to be the Great Fairy Mask. Earlier in the series, Great Fairies were really pretty standard in design terms. Simple pixies, who were really just placed here and there to restore your health in a few set areas. There was one in A Link to the Past who you could pay to upgrade your equipment like bomb and arrow capacity, and even your sword if you knew what you were doing but basically all you got from them was some healing. It wasn't until the first 3D Zelda game, Ocarina of Time, that they took on a much... stranger appearance. On top of being half-naked with a set of gigantic eyes, they also scream and laugh like banshees when you summon them. Appearance aside, they actually became much more helpful. They now give Link direct upgrades to his health, magic meter, and spin attack. They also give you magic spells as well. One for attack, one for defense, and one for teleportation. In Majora's Mask, however, they actually have a job for you to do before you can get an upgrade from them. See, on top of stealing your horse, Skull Kid has done a lot of bad things around Termina. One of which being chopping up the great fairies into these little things called stray fairies. While most of them stay behind in the fountain, there's still a bunch that get stuck inside the game's dungeons. Back in Clockdown, however, there's only one you need to find. In fact, you actually find it back when you're a Deku Scrub, since you need the magic attack she gives you. But if you go find it again after reversing time and becoming human again, she'll give you the Great Fairy Mask. On top of making you look just fabulous, the Great Fairy Mask is incredibly helpful within the dungeons. The hair of the mask will start sparkling if there's any stray fairies in the room you're in, and assuming they aren't trapped within a bubble or a chest, will actually pull them towards you. This makes collecting stray fairies way easier than just trying to guess where they might be, since they honestly hid these guys in some pretty tough spots. With each dungeon, you receive an upgrade from the respective fairies once they're rescued. The Woodfall Fairy grants you a doubled magic meter, the Snowhead Fairy gives you an upgraded spin attack, the Great Bay Fairy basically permanently doubles your health, and the Icana Valley Fairy gives you one of the coolest things in this game, the Great Fairy Sword. This thing's basically a two-handed claymore that does quadruple the damage of your regular sword. It is an amazing reward that is so fun to decimate enemies with. Iron Knuckles have nothing on this thing. Without further ado, on to the actual getting of Got Item. To start, I used a modified version of the dome template I borrowed from Evil Ted Smith. I changed the shape to make an actual pointy face instead of a round dome. Once I had the face shape, I used hot glue to seal the gaps between the pieces, with the hope being that I could cover the whole thing in a layer or two of primer to hide it before I tried painting, since I knew that masking tape would give me a much rougher shape than I wanted. Unfortunately, the spray-on primer I was trying to use really didn't want to sit right. It either just drizzled off or just absorbed into the foam. After giving up on properly priming it, I started cutting and gluing on foam to form the three sections of hair. Once I had the shape ready, I used a cheap pink wig cut the netting a bit, divided it into three sections, and wrapped them around each of the hair sections. I should mention, this sucked. I do not know how people with long hair work with this stuff. I was legitimately pulling pink hairs out of the carpet for hours once I finished with the mask. Hair is hard to work with. I have roughly six hours of unused footage, which is just me wrestling with this stupid wig and trying to shape it and keep it steady in the places I want. This stuff broke my comb. Granted, the comb was only one dollar, but still. Anyways, after 8 hours of trying to shape this hair, I eventually gave up on getting it as smooth as I wanted and just started super gluing it down in sections, basically layering it. It looked a lot more frizzy than I'd hoped, but after 8 hours I was done trying to make it look perfect. Once I had the hair on, I began poking holes in a few spots and weaving some plastic flower stems through the thing until they wrapped around into a sort of, like, wreath. Then I glued some more leaves onto some green wire to form the hair bands. Once I had the leaves and stems all in place, I cut out the nose, sanded it down so it was a smooth shape, and glued it onto the face. With the hair, vines, and nose ready to go, and with primer not working, I began taping the face with masking tape, being as careful as I could not to get it wrinkled. I ended up using more tape than necessary and used an X-Acto knife to cut off the excess right at the edge. With the tape on, the hair glued, and the vines placed, I began painting. At first, I tried simply using a reference photo and painting it without sketching it out first. As you can see, it looked terrifying. So I let it dry and repainted over it with the same color I used for the face. After the first face was covered, I went and practiced drawing the eyes and mouth on paper, and once I felt more comfortable, lightly drew them onto the face with a pencil. Afterwards, I traced the lines with a thin line of black and got to work coloring in the details. 
Once I had the eyes colored in, I sprinkled a tiny bit of pink glitter onto them to give them more of a sparkle sparkle. With the face painted and everything else taken care of, I super glued a strap to the backside and glued a piece of fabric to the back so you don't have to stuff your face into plastic flower stems. And with that, it was finished. Considering how much time went into working with the hair, I am glad it turned out as well as it did. I was definitely worried about painting this one more than I was for the Deku mask since there's much finer details to worry about, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty alright. All in all, this took me about 12 hours, with 8 of them being working with the stupid wig. The Great Fairy Mask is really helpful if you like getting all the upgrades in a game. This definitely speeds up the process since some of the Stray Fairies are really, really difficult to find. Anyways, that's that. Two down, 22 to go. So let's get to it. And just you wait, this one's gonna blow your mind. And also the rest of your head, because this is basically a grenade that you wear on your face. Who made this? Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some babysitting to do.